Good morning, algebra students. Okay, guys, so we're, this today is our first day of distance learning, and I know the timing is terrible, but we do have a unit four exam set. So if you've read my um, little message on um, Google Classroom, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through the review with you like we always do, the practice exam, and then you will take the exam at home, but I will let you use notes and all that fun stuff and then attempt to make this a little bit um, easier. So, like I said, I'm not gonna say for sure if it's gonna count or not unless you guys all do really well on it, okay? So, but it's the same thing as always. If you pay attention to what I'm doing in this video and you practice, you'll be fine. So let's start off with number one, the slope of a line that passes through the points, negative seven and five and eight negative one. By the way, Drew is watching uh, Frozen in the other room. So if you're hearing music, that's what it is. Okay, so remember to find the slope we're using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so as we have been doing in class, we're labeling our points. This is our first point. This is our second point, okay? Each point is of the form x, y, x, y. So since this is point one, this is x1, y1. Since this is point two, x2, y2. Okay, so now from here, we're just plugging in the numbers. So y2 is negative one minus y1 is five over x2, which is eight, minus x1, which is negative seven. Be careful for all your negatives, okay? So we have a double neg, I'm sorry, we have two negatives up here, and here we have a double negative, which turns into a positive, right? So I've got negative one minus five, same signs we add and keep, so that's negative six over eight plus seven, which is 15. If you look, your answer is not there, which means this needs to be simplified. Of course, in your calculators, you're gonna Use math, enter, enter, or math frac, and this simplifies to negative two fifths because what we're really doing is dividing by three, top and bottom. Okay, so that gives us negative two fifths. That's choice three. Okay, all right, number two the line showed below, shown graphed below, could have which of the following characteristics? We're going to use. Um, process of elimination here. It's going to be nice and easy. From left to right, we're looking. My line is going up, which means the slope is going to be positive. Positive slope, right? So right away, I'm going to eliminate anything that's got a negative slope. So it can't be choice two, it can't be choice four. Now we have to look at that y-intercept. Up here is where our y values are positive. Down here, they're negative. So my y-intercept, remember that's where my line hits or crosses the y-axis. My y-intercept is in the negative area. So that means it's gonna be a negative, sorry, <laughs> negative y-intercept. So you're gonna look and see which one says that there's a positive slope and a negative y-intercept and that's choice three, okay? Number three, a health insurance plan costs $150 each month plus an extra $25 for each doctor's visit. Which equation below models the total yearly cost of the plan as a function of the number of doctor's visits, which is N. Now, this one's tricky because it's gonna be really tempting to go with the 150 because it says each month. But if you look here, they're asking for the yearly cost. Do we know how many months are in a year? We sure do. There's 12 months in a year. So if you have to pay $150 each month, we already know that's a set amount. There's 12, <laughs> there's 12 months in a year. What we don't know is how many doctor's visits. So the 25 for each doctor's visit, that's gonna be what we use our variable for. So if we know it's $150 for each month, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 150 times 12. Okay, and you're gonna use your calculators for this, but I will just show you the long way. Okay, that's gonna give us 1,800. So that means 1,800 is gonna be our, basically our y-intercept. So from here, you could actually figure out which one it is because it's the only one that it's a y-intercept in. But if you still want it to be very thorough, the $25 for each doctor visit, 
they're giving us n for every doctor's visit, so that's gonna be 25 times n. So if you put these two things together, that gives us $25 for each doctor's visit plus the 100, sorry, $1,800 that we have to pay each year. So as you can see, that's choice one. Try not to be tempted to go with the 150N plus 25. Okay, make sure you pay attention to the fact that this is for each visit and that we're talking about the yearly cost. Okay, number four, a line with a slope of negative five passes through the point two comma negative three, which is the equation of the line. Okay, so if we do this the long way, what we would be doing is we'd be using our equation y equals mx plus b and plugging in the information we're given to find the y-intercept, okay? So first we can, of course, eliminate some things here because they're telling us our slope is negative five. The slope is of course next to x. So I've got two possible answers. I can eliminate these two because if my slope is negative five, it can't be these because these have a slope of negative three and this one has a slope of two, okay? So it's just a matter of figuring out whether the y-intercept is negative three or seven. So this point, two negative three that I'm getting from right here, that gives us an x and a y and we know that our slope is m. So I'm gonna plug this into my equation. y is negative three is equal to m is negative five times x is two plus b, and I'll be able to figure out what my y-intercept is. So this is negative three is equal to negative five times two is negative 10 plus b. Now, in order to solve for b, I just have to get it alone. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And this gives me b is equal to 7. So that would be choice 4, because, of course, my b is my y-intercept. Okay? Okay, number 5, we're looking at which of the following inequalities is shown graphs below. I'm going to look at my graph, and I'm probably going to be able to figure this out just by looking at the line and the direction of the shading. Remember, a dashed line means that it's not included, so it's either a less than or a greater than symbol. So now we're looking at the shading. The shading is above my line. Remember, if you're not sure if it's above or below, take a look at the value. So if I'm here, I'm at negative one. If I'm up here, this is positive three. Positive three is greater than negative one, so I'm shading above, okay? So that means, is it less than or greater than? should be a greater than. So without doing any other work, I can select choice one because it's the only equation that has the greater than, okay? Greater than or equal to is not correct because that would be a solid line. Number six, we're looking at a piecewise function. Now these can be tricky, but remember that they're just two separate functions with two separate answers depending on an interval. So first look at the top one, okay? and look at the x values that it corresponds to. So you follow it down. If we label our graph, this is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Look at the circle, it's a closed circle, so it's included, okay? Um, and it goes all the way up to, follow this x value down, that's one, two. So from negative four to two, and this is also closed, the value of y is equal to, and then you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first condition should be that it's equal to seven when x is in between negative four and two. Now, since these are both closed circles, we should have two less than or equal to symbols. Now you can use process of elimination here because the first values are not negative four, it should be seven. So it's either this choice or this choice. And we saw that it went from negative four to two and that they were both closed circles. So if they're both closed circles, I need these included signs. So that's gonna be choice one. So just to clarify, if you were going to look at the second piece of the piecewise function, we're looking from x equals two and that's an open circle. So that's gonna be less than Okay, sorry, I can't really hold this too well right now. And then this is gonna be three, four, five, six. 
and that's a closed circle, so it's less than or equal to. And the value of y is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So as you can see, negative 3 when x is in between 2 and 6. And of course, that 2 was an open circle, so it's a less than. Okay, which of the following equations is true for all points on... Hmm, all points that lie, that on should not be there. On the vertical line, no, that's the wrong on that I crossed out. <laughs> Are all points that lie on the vertical line that passes through the points negative 4, comma 8? So here's what I want you guys to think. Draw a vertical line. Remember, vertical jump, right? So that's up and down. If it's a vertical line, it's going through the x-axis. So that means we're looking at the x value. This equation would be x equals something, right? So you just look and see which one is your x value. Well, x is negative 4. So the equation of that line is going to be x equals negative 4. That's choice 4. If this was a vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal line, remember, that would be going through the y-axis. That would give us the y equals 8. So try not to get tripped up by that. Okie dokie. So now we have a um, an arithmetic sequence. They're giving us the recursive rule that any term in the sequence can be found by taking, remember this n minus 1 means the previous term, multiplying it by negative 2 and then adding 3. Okay? So remember that means the previous term. Okay? So they're telling us if a sub 1, which is the first term, is 5, then what's going to be a sub 3? So we're just going to find, in this case it's easy enough to do it the long way instead of using the formula that's on the reference sheet. So it's telling me take the previous term, that's 5, multiply it by negative 2, and then add 3. So plug that right in your calculator, gives you negative 10 plus 3, which is negative 7. Okay, that's your second term, they want the third. So now to find the third term, I'm taking again my previous term, but in this case that's negative 7. I'm multiplying that by negative 2 and then adding 3. So in this case that's 14 plus 3, which is 17. That's choice 2. Okay, time for the part 2 questions. First one is, does the line whose equation is y equals negative 2x plus 13 pass through the point 4 comma 5 and explain how you arrived at your answer. So all we have to do as always is plug it in and see if it works. Okay. <laughs> Alright so we have 4 comma 5 that's x and y. So I'm using y equals negative 2x plus 13. Yo Drew. I'm going to replace y with 5 and x with 4. Remember, we have to use those parentheses. Plus 13. 5 is equal to negative 8 plus 13. 5 is equal to 5. Since this holds true, it does pass through the point. Okay, so you're going to write that out. Yes, the point four comma five. Sorry, it's the equation. I'm a little distracted by Drew singing Frozen. Yes, the equation y equals negative two x plus thirteen pass through the point four comma five. Okay. And if you explain it, you can write anything along the lines of when you plug it into the equation, it holds true, anything like that. All right, number 10. I'm going to just put this under paper so that I have a little bit less bumps when I'm writing. Okay, an arithmetic sequence has a first term of 8 and a second term of 13. Determine the value of its 10th term. So this is where you're going to take a look at your reference sheet. So I'm going to pause for a second to pull that up, and I'll be right back. Hey guys, 
Here's the reference sheet, which you can find on jmath.org if you want to. And here you go. Our arithmetic sequence formula that we're going to use is right here. A sub n or any term in the sequence can be found by taking the first term and adding to that. Remember that the n represents the number of the term you're trying to find. That number minus 1 times d, which is the pattern. Okay, so we're back here. I've written down the formula from the reference sheet. Okay, um, you can use that on the test tomorrow. It's not given on the test itself, so you might want to look back in the notes for that. Make sure you have it readily available. So n is the number of the term you're looking for. So if we're trying to find the tenth term, n is 10. Okay, so now I just have to figure out what d is. d is the pattern, what's being added each time or subtracted. So to get from 8 to 13, I'm adding 5. So my D is 5. Oh, Drew is very uh, vocal today. So the 10th term is given by finding the first term, which was 8, plus N minus 1. So that's 10 minus 1, which is 9, times D, which we decided was 5. Okay, so the 10th term is going to be 8 plus 45, which gives us, you got it, 53. So the 10th term, Drew, the 10th term is 53, okay? All right, part three questions. Evan's modeling the temperature of water <clears throat> heating on the stove. She finds that the Fahrenheit temperature can be modeled by the linear function f of m is equal to 15.2 m plus 58 m is the number of minutes that the water has been heating so we have to give a physical interpretation of the parameters 15.2 and 58 in this model remember that when they're asking you this they're not asking you to say oh 15.2 is a slope and 58 is your y-intercept you have to use number one appropriate units when you explain and you also have to give a physical interpretation. So that means in the context of the problem, what does this mean? So we're starting off, the, the water's heating on the stove. The y-intercept is your starting point. So the 58 represents the starting point. In this case, that would be temperature, the starting temperature of the water. The 15.2, well since that's the slope, it's a rate of change. So the 15.2 represents the rate, and what are we talking about? In degrees Fahrenheit for every minute. So we can write that in parentheses. In degrees Fahrenheit per minute that the water is heating up. And then any variation of that would be acceptable. The only thing you need to remember is that you're using units. So I'm saying temperature, I'm saying degrees Fahrenheit per minute, and we're giving a physical interpretation. We're talking about this in the context of the problem. I'm not saying 15.2 is my slope, 58 is my winder staff, even though that's true. Okay guys, so we're almost done here. Number 12, we're writing the equation of the line that passes through these two points. So first thing, remember we have steps for this somewhere in your notes. If you forgot, you wanna take a look at those. This is point one, this is point two. First we need to find our slope and then we'll find our y-intercept. Each one of these points is an x and a y. First point is x1, y1. Second point is x2, y2. So first I'm gonna find my slope. So m is given by, I'm sorry, this is very bumpy today, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're just gonna use our points. So y2 is 11 minus y1 is negative one. So that's a double negative, be careful not to forget it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, over x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is two. Okay, so this turns into a plus sign, it's a double negative. 11 plus one is 12 over 10 minus two is eight. And again, 
you can use your calculator here to simplify this fraction using math enter enter <clears throat> but I know I can divide both of these by four that gives me three halves so my M in the equation is three halves so that's the first piece I need now if you recall in order to find B what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these points plug in the X and the Y now we're gonna use our M and then we can solve for B so Let's pick this point because it's a little bit nicer, even though it's a negative, the points are, numbers are smaller. So that's my X and Y, and my M is 3 halves. So I'm going to rewrite the equation of a line, Y equals MX plus B. I'm going to replace the Y with negative 1. I'm going to replace my M with 3 halves. I'm going to replace my X with 2. See how nice that's going to work out plus b, because remember the goal is to find b here. Okay, now 3 halves times 2. If you remember when you have numerator and denominator the same, they cancel out. But if you put that in your calculator, that's fine. Negative 1 is equal to 3 plus b. I just need b by itself, so I subtract the 3 from both sides, and b is equal to negative 4. So now, I have the two pieces of information that I need to write the final equation. So I take these and I'm going to finally write this. Y equals M, which is 3 halves, X plus negative 4. And of course you can write that as Y equals 3 halves X minus 4. That's your final solution. Now notice it does say simplest form. So if you don't reduce that 3 halves, you will lose points. Okay. Number 13, we have to graph this line that they've provided us, but it's not in y equals mx plus b form. So in order to do that, I need it to be in that form. So that means I need to get y by itself. So first we subtract x from both sides, and I'm left with 2y equals negative x plus 12. Then we have to divide both sides by 2. And remember, this is where we break it up using the distributive property of division. <clears throat> So y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so that's our equation that we're going to graph. So now in order to do this, you have to take a second to label your graph. Okay. So I'm gonna just start off with positives for now. You start with your y-intercept. Remember, b is where you begin. So we're starting at six on the y-axis. So you'll find six and place a point there. Okay, your slope is negative one half. So because it's negative, that means we're going down one over two from that point. So we start here, we go down one over two and place a point. Down one over two, place a point. Down one, over two, place a point. Down one, over two, and place a point. Then we're gonna connect our lines. If you have a ruler at home, feel free to use it. Okay, this is our line. Y equals one, negative one half X plus six. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is that they wanna know where does the line that we graph intersect Y equals five. So we have to go to where y is equal to 5 on our graph. So y is equal to 5 right here. And remember, you just draw a straight line right through that point. So it goes this way and that way. This is the line y equals 5. They want to know what point do they intersect. So you can see that they intersect right here. And they are not asking for the full point. They're asking for the value of x. So if you want to, you can write the point first. That's x is 2 and y is 5, so the x value is 2. You could always write that out too. You could say where x is equal to 2. Okay, guys, so for the part 4 question for this test, I'm going to have it eliminated just in the interest of having a little bit less work to be doing during this time. Um, 
If you'd like to try it for extra credit, I will give you guys extra points. Okay, um, but for now, this is all we're going to be doing and that's all I'm gonna be grading you on. Okay guys, so good luck. Any questions, you can post it in the comment. Um, on YouTube, it's not gonna let you guys comment because I did have to say that this is an account that's meant for kids. So even though you guys are older than the other classes, I still have to have it set that way. And it disables the comments when it's a an account that's made for kids. Okay, so if you need to comment something, please make sure it's on Google Classroom and make sure that it's not on the stream, it's on something I've posted. All right, have fun.